As we begin this time of worship, I invite you to just take a moment, take a few deep breaths. I know for me, sometimes it takes a moment or two to fully arrive, even though we're sheltered at home, so that we can be present in this moment of worship. Hear these words. Through the risen Christ, let us imagine the world anew, our hearts open to a future born from radical love. Nothing is final. Nothing is permanent. All that leads to inequality, injustice, and insecurity can change. We know with change there will be challenges and losses, but we can shoulder them together. In the company of the Spirit, impossibilities are made possible. When love resists evil, hardened hearts can melt. Practices of corruption and abuse can be overturned. Hope can lead to deliverance. God enables us to live as if it's so. Loving God, come and renew our belief. Let us worship. Hello, and welcome to Worship at First United Methodist Church of Ann Arbor. My name is Reverend Nancy Lynn, and I'm the lead pastor here. Joining me is... Nick Berlanga. I am the associate pastor, and with us is... Tim Kobler. I'm the chaplain of the Wesley Foundation at the University of Michigan. And I invite you to join me on the weekdays at 1030 a.m. on our Facebook page, both for my personal one and for the Wesley Foundation, for weekday devotionals. It's a time to have a, an engagement with the scripture, to uh, be able to share with one another our
prayer concerns and celebrations and, and just feel a sense of connection with one another. Also, next Tuesday evening at 7 p.m., I'm hosting a game night, which is for the Wesley Foundation or for whosoever wishes to join. And that'll be 7 p.m. on the Wesley Foundation Facebook page. Thank you. That sounds like a blast. That sounds like a blast. You know, if you are worshiping with us today, we would love to know that. Um, in the email, the invitation from the church, there's a link. Or if you're watching from YouTube on the YouTube page, there's a link that you can click on and it will open up a registration form. It'll give you an opportunity to let us know you were here. Or um, if you're new, an opportunity to ask for additional information. So we hope you take advantage of that. And finally, we wanted to let you know about our upcoming sermon series. Starting next week, I'll start a series called Coping with COVID um, and Spiritual Practices. So I will preach each week on one different element of what we're all dealing with emotionally and spiritually right now. Then I'll also teach a spiritual practice and uh, share a service opportunity with you. And then the following Thursday, there will be a Zoom meeting, Zoom opportunity to practice that spiritual practice together. Uh, those will be at 7 o'clock. So watch out for more information, and I'll look forward to seeing you when we start our new sermon series. For now, let's continue with worship. Hi, all. I'm Shepherd Rick, Pastor Nick's twin brother. Hey, I'm just out here in the field taking care of my sheep. They're over there a bit because if they get in front of the camera, they all start acting up and showing off. So we're just going to keep them over there. You know, shepherds work rain or shine. It's our job to make sure that we keep our, our sheep safe, that they get good grass to eat, clean water to drink. And if anything comes up, bothers them like a wolf, that's what this is for keep them safe. Did you know shepherds have been around for over 6,000 years? Yep. In fact, in the Bible, it talks about shepherds. That makes me feel good. Yep. King David, the greatest king in the Old Testament, started out as a shepherd as a young boy. And he remembered that when he wrote his song of, of thanks to God. He talked about how God is like a shepherd. God takes care of us, leads us to the good things that we need, and protects us in the hard times. I love knowing that God is like a shepherd. And I think that's a good thing to, to pray on. So let's pray. God, thank you for taking care of us. We ask that, that you continue to do that, that you take care of our church, you take care of our families and that you keep us safe. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long.
This is a reading of Acts, chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Our Gospel reading today is from John chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep, the gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. In this fourth weekend following Easter, that's the time, usually, when the lectionary provides us with scripture readings that come from the Gospel of John chapter 10, where Jesus refers to himself as the Good Shepherd. And we also hear from Psalm 23, where God is presented as the Lord being our shepherd that provides all of our needs. It's comforting in some ways, but in other ways it can be disquieting because we know that um, sheep often get a bad rap. I'm sorry, I can't resist. I'm a dad and it's one of those oaths that I took whenever my kids were born. <laughs> to my children, I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. But they do have a bad reputation. They get assumed to be the dumbest animals around, idiots in fact, having no sense of direction and can only survive with the help of someone with a little Bo Peep staff in hand. But yet it's inspired songs like Gentle Shepherd Come and Lead Us, and in Handel's Messiah, All We Like Sheep Have Gone Astray. But it's difficult for us in the 21st century to be able to think of ourselves in a good way as being sheep. We see online a lot of people being referred to as sheeple if they join this uh, group thinking and um, check their brain at the door. But in Jesus' day, when these words were first brought to the, the church community, it was something that they identified with very strongly. 
because it was highly agrarian and they raised animals. They knew sheep. They raised them and understood how they behaved. Experts today say that sheep are actually quite smart. They're highly emotional. They're highly social animals. They recognize up to 50 human faces in their lifetime. And just as Jesus said in this particular passage of scripture, they can identify voices as well. So they do know their shepherd's voice. And if there's a good relationship with the shepherd, they trust that and will come when called. They have their morning routines and rituals and they grieve the death of other sheep. Now, sheep aren't good at some things. They don't live well alone. They really need each other. And so one of the main concerns for a shepherd is to bring the flock together, to help them stay together because they're, they're best when they are community. They seem to lose their instincts for self-preservation whenever they're apart from one another. There's a story that came out recently about a sheep that had been lost in Australia when the wildfires had come a few years ago. And Prickles, the sheep, had been missing for quite some time, but some of the wildlife cameras in the outskirts of the property of the farm owners uh, picked up this animal walking through the wilderness. And so one day they encountered Prickles, the sheep, out at the edge of the property. She had grown wool to about five times the width of what a sheep would normally be and had acquired all sorts of barbs and briars and things. And so that's where she got the name Prickles. So they brought her home and cleaned her up and brought her back into the community where she thrived. It was amazing, though, that she was able to live all of those years on her own. But the shepherd is looking out for the good of the sheep, trying to bring everyone together. We recall Jesus telling the story of the 99 sheep and, that were in the fold and the one that had gotten away and how a good shepherd would go and retrieve that one that was lost. The others will look out for each other for that short time while the shepherd is away. And so Jesus is bringing words of comfort, but also challenge for his particular society in that day. Because that day was a time of the Roman Empire's occupation of Israel. And there were a lot of strong feelings about that. And Jesus had, in the Gospel of John at least, presented himself as a mirror image from Caesar. Caesar being one who brings the Pax Romana, which is the peace that comes through the threat of violence. As long as you do as I say, everything will be fine for you. It was a protection racket. As long as you behave and give your tributes to me, you'll be okay. But Jesus brings this sense of unconditional love that God loves regardless. And that Jesus, being the good shepherd, is not one who brings peace only at the threat of violence if there's misbehavior, but rather protection and provision. In that day in the Roman Empire, Food scarcity was well known. About 70 to 80 percent of the people were living with a situation of food scarcity. And so people understood when Jesus was feeding the multitudes, when Jesus was talking about providing for the followers. And when Jesus broke the bread and gave the cup, it rang a bell of truth for them. They understood what that meant for someone to provide for them. But we live in a time that's also divided, where there are great and high emotions over many things. Our world, our nation, our denomination is so divided, so segregated. We just look at our neighborhoods, our jobs, our churches. We are asking questions of who gets to come in. But the message that comes to us from the Good Shepherd is a call to life. We, the people of God, can't truly live well apart from one another. We can't truly live when we are cutting one another off. The Good Shepherd has come to hold us close to each other. If only we would hear his voice. Like it or not, the Good Shepherd is drawing us into all eternal solidarity with each other. We see in the reading from the book of Acts, how the early church put that into practice. They were still 
understanding what it was to live under the threat of the Roman Empire. And because of their faith in Jesus Christ, there were very real threats to their life and livelihood. There were things that they had to give up to sacrifice in order to be people of faith. And so recognizing that, they pulled together. And in this close-knit community, they looked out for the good of each other. They were doing things to hold all things in common, to sell property that they didn't need so that they could use those proceeds to care for the widows and the orphans and those that had any need whatsoever. So the question comes to us today, in this 21st century, in this day of living the pandemic, how is it that we are called as God's children to bring the fold together? to listen to the Good Shepherd's voice, to bring us into that eternal solidarity with God and with each other. What is it that we are doing to encourage and to care for one another? For some of us, it's staying home and being safe, to not infect other people around us and to not spread COVID-19. Others of us are called to be first responders and put ourselves at risk by the jobs that we do. Others are essential workers that are helping to keep things going. Some of us are driving around and delivering meals to children who don't get their school lunches anymore, but are hungry and need nourishment. Others of us are doing things in various capacities to educate one another, to help with our children. There are so many ways in which we see people living these gifts, truly embodying this sense of that first century church in Acts, we realize that we hold more in common than we have separating us. But there are questions that we have to continually ask. Just as the church did in those early days, they had to ask themselves, what are ways in which they had been participating in systems that oppress others? What are things that they need to change in order to change what is normal? We know that what was normal prior to COVID-19 is not what we need to go back to. It wasn't working. There were so many people who were oppressed by what was going on. Where do we grasp, grasp and grapple for power? How is it that we are holding on to our privilege and not making space, holding space for other people who need to have their voices heard? How is it that we can lift them up so others can hear them? When are we challenging systems, even when it will cost us something? The disciples in those early days had to give up some of their jobs. They had to give up some of their understandings of who they were in this new understanding of faith as they were following the way that Jesus, the Good Shepherd, was leading them on. What are things that we need to lay aside? Assumptions about ourselves, assumptions about this world, so that we can look out for the good of all. Are we following the voice of the Good Shepherd who calls us to call out these systems and to follow in the path to abundant life? Because ultimately, Jesus said that's what the Shepherd has come to do, that all might have life and have it abundantly. So friends, let's look at how we can continue in these days ahead to find that kind of life, not only for ourselves, but for all of our siblings, all around. May it be so. Amen. Please join me for a time of prayer. Shepherding God, as the weeks drag on and the world continues to struggle with COVID-19, we find ourselves isolated, worn, and afraid. We seek comfort and familiarity, reassurance that even in the chaos of this time, we can find stability and a sense of hope. Open our ears to hear the sound of your voice as you call to us. Remind us that you are always there to lead us forward, to care for our needs, to watch over and shelter us. This time of crisis reminds us of how very interdependent we are in our families, our communities, nation to nation, and around the world, 
Our future health depends on our willingness to care for one another. Even as we long for togetherness, give us the wisdom to love our neighbor by staying at home. Open the hearts of those who grow impatient that they might realize how their cooperation can save lives. Thank you, God, for those who spend hour after hour fighting this disease in our hospitals and care facilities. Thank you for the grocery store workers and mail carriers, delivery people and truck drivers, all those who leave the safety of home so that we can manage the essentials of life. Send your wisdom to our leaders as they try to chart a course for an unknown known future. We pray that they too will listen to your shepherd's voice. Finally, inspire us with creativity as the days go by so we can find new ways to be a family to one another, to stay connected despite the virus, and to offer our gifts and resources to the world. Help us to reach out to you and to each other that we might find hope in your beloved community. All of this and all that lives sheltered in our hearts, we pray in the name of Jesus, the shepherd, who taught us these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. When we give to the church, we support the work that God is doing through First United Methodist Church, not just within our congregation, with our children's and youth ministries, music ministries, and so forth, but also the work we do of hope and justice around the world. Let's continue now by offering our gifts to God. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy, I sing because I'm free, for his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Let not your heart be troubled, his tender word I hear, and resting on his goodness, I lose my doubts and fears. Though by the path he leadeth, but one step I may see, his eyes are on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. 
His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eyes on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. Wherever I am tempted, whenever clouds arise, when song gives place to sighing, when hope within me dies, I draw the closer to him. From care he sets me free. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. For his eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Old 
one of a rainbow, fiery pillar, leading away the eagle soar. We are people as the journey, now and ever. As you go into this week, wherever you find yourselves, may God be above you to watch over you. May God be below you to uphold you. May God go before you to guide you. May God be behind you to defend you. May God be beside you to befriend you. And may God be within you to give you life and hope. Go in peace. Amen.